Yes, these magazines or newsletters used to arrive regularly in the mail, and really, they were the only contact I had with unschooling information. No internet in those days, very few books. And so I didn't understand unschooling very well. I didn't have enough contact with people uh, who were unschooling to ask my questions, to listen to their answers, to ponder unschooling. Uh, I guess I went to a couple of conferences and that did help. Uh, But, you know, there's always so much more to learn, isn't there? You cannot learn about unschooling by visiting uh, one conference for two hours, talking to a few people afterwards. You really need time uh, and lots of resources or lots of people to talk about or lots of time to observe your own children to learn what it's all about. And so I got off to a bad start. I thought, oh, look, there must be more to unschooling than stepping back and just letting kids get on with the task of learning. I didn't really see how that would work. And so a little bit down the line, I gave up and moved on to other things. But somewhere along the line, I did come across this homeschooling book. It might have been one of those books where there was a chapter for different types of homeschooling. And there was a chapter written by an unschooler. And each person, each author, uh, described their typical day. And the unschooling mother described how they got up. I don't remember all the details, but I do remember it was uh, a leisurely start to their day. Maybe they stopped and made pancakes or something. They didn't rush. They didn't worry about, oh, we must get um, must get started for the day. We've got lots of things we have to tick off our lists. No, they took it nice and easy. And then I re- the next bit I remember is they all put on their skates and they skated down <laughs> their path to the mailbox to see if the mail had arrived. And it must have been a very long um path or driveway because it was worth them all sitting out on their skates. They got a bit of exercise along the way. And that's all I can remember. But I do remember what I thought. I thought, well, I like to get up early. I don't like to get up late. And I don't think that I want to skate along a path with my children. We're not into skating. Uh, What do we do? We're unschoolers. What are we supposed to be doing? And I guess I missed the principles of unschooling when I read that story. I looked at the looked at it from the outside. I looked at the actions, but didn't understand why they were occurring. Why was the mother skating down the pathway with her children? Well, one of the things could be that she was enjoying sharing a passion with her children. And she was putting her children first and wasn't worrying about outside expectations. But I didn't get that from the reading of this story. And so I wanted to write a book about what unschoolers do, some suggestions. Now, I've already written two books with lots and lots of stories about what my family has done, Curious Unschoolers and Radical Unschool Love. And maybe those stories have helped, but I wanted to explore those principles behind the actions in more detail. Why did we do what we did? And what can you do Or what can anybody do who's interested in unschooling do uh, if you want to put those unschooling principles into action? If you want to turn unschooling theory into something real in your lives, what what can you do? You don't want to copy what my family is doing. You want to work things out so that what you do suits your family and your children best. But even though unschooling can look very different in different people's lives, we do all share these unschooling principles. And I guess that's the basis of the book, exploring the principles of unschooling. And I'm suggesting ways that you can incorporate them into your real lives. Uh, So...